Um, I guess the only way I can start is by uh, sharing my unhappiness with the way signs were being done in the past. The first part of, of that I learned was you made your print on a piece of uh, whatever the printer paper was, and then you promptly took a piece of sandpaper or wet the paper and started to peel off the back to make it thinner. And uh, well, I tried all those things. And after doing it five times, I finally got one that worked. And I thought, this is not for me. I am not going to do this. I'm not going to go through the headache of doing this again. So what I came up with is a process using the um, Microsoft Word, an inkjet printer. Uh, I'm not sure how it would work with a laser printer, but I know it works with an inkjet printer. So uh, what I start with is I, I pick signs. And I have a whole file of signs that I've, over a couple of years, I've managed to uh, collect from the internet. So they're all digital, and that's all you need is a digital sign, because then you can manipulate the, si the size. Like if I was to click on this Pepsi sign now, you get this little square around it. And if you grab one of these dots... Yeah, Ralph, you're you... not showing your screen yet, mate. All right on. Hang on. I went too big too soon. There we go. All right. How's that? Is that sharing? You go, dear. Yeah, carry on. Okay. So I click on the Pepsi sign, which... My the, the sign that I was looking for, the one that drove me was a sign that I saw on the side of a covered bridge on George Selios's layout, and it was Coca-Cola. And I thought, I have to do that. I want to be able to do that. So I couldn't actually find the Coca-Cola that I wanted, but I found Pepsi, and it goes back to the early days of Pepsi. But when you click on any one of these, you get that little window. This is in Microsoft Word. And it doesn't matter what version you have. At some point, all of these uh, pointers that I'm giving you are in Microsoft Word. So by clicking on these, you can actually, any one of these, you can make it bigger. And going through this, so here's, here's the tools you're going to need. Color Inkjet. Or a color laser printer. I'm saying that because uh, the only reason I'm not sure of it is when you work with the inkjet printer and you print this stuff out, you print it out at uh, draft mode. And I'm not sure if a laser printer has that. What that does is it reduces the amount of color that goes into the print. So then you need a, a hobby knife with a new blade a straight edge for cutting and i i usually use a steel ruler that has the cork backing and the cork backing stops the paper from moving around on you you don't have to press so hard 3m mending tape the one that uh it's it's frosted and it comes in a a green plaid on it on the packaging um a tape measure or a ruler regular printer paper and what i what i use is um, i think it's 20 pound paper and white glue and when i say white glue it can be um carpenter not the yellow carpenter glue but the white stuff do not use school grade glue because that'll break down on you in this method uh, matte media um, either one is a 50-50 mix of glue and water. And a lint-free cloth or an old t-shirt. And an airbrush. And I know a lot of people don't have an airbrush. But um, since the printer does not print white, unless you want to go out and spend 12 
$1,200 to $1,500 on a printer that's going to print white for you, then you're going to need some way to put white as a backing. So when this process is done, you have a white, like the letters or the, on, on the, uh, this stripe, this white stripe in the Pepsi. If you don't have the white on the background on the wall when you do it, you're going to see brick. You're not going to see any white at all. So what you do is you find out on your wall, take any kind of wall. This just happens to be a plastic one. And you figure out where you want your sign to go. Now, I've marked it. You don't have to mark it like that, but... I've marked it there so for, for this photograph picture or for the purposes of explaining it. Um, I also did a triangle of white on this so that you could see the difference. And on when the paper that I used for this, it didn't show the difference, but it did for the Pepsi. And I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll explain to you why that works. So you have to measure it out. You measure out the width of the sign you're going to put up. Once you've got the width, the, the, the length is going to be self-determining. It doesn't really matter, but three and a quarter. And I moved down and I marked that on, on just make notes. You don't have to mark it on the wall, but make notes as you go along. So here's the signs. Now. Um, this one here, I use uh, the other thing that wasn't on the list. I have uh, tracing paper, which I get from an art supply store. Or you can get also from an art supply store. Uh, they used to call it onion skin. I don't know what they call it now. To me, it's tracing paper. You can buy it in a booklet form or you can buy it in a roll form. There's also and everybody's seen this gift wrap the tissue paper that people put in in gifts because they don't want to wrap something so they get this gift bag they put the gift in and they fill it up with this tissue paper it has a uh, sort of a white color to it so that'll help give you a background which is when i did this sign that's what i used so what you do is you go to your program and you locate it on a page. You start with an, uh, a new page, you import your picture, and you can now size it. And if you go up into the, I believe it's uh, reference, in the view, there. Click on ruler, and the ruler comes up, and it usually comes up on both sides. Uh, not sure why it didn't, but that's what you do. You click on that and the ruler comes up. So in this drawing, you can see the ruler on both sides. And what that does, it gives you the actual measurement that you're printing. So we go back to that wall and we marked it at three and a quarter. So you make this from there to there, three and a quarter. And you're going to have, because the measurement starts at one side, you're going to have to uh, figure out what it is from the, you know, subtract whatever is at the beginning and add it to the end. So it's actually three and a quarter inches wide. And when you, it, when you make it larger, automatically windows will keep the aspect ratio. So, uh, the height will stay the same in relation to the width that it was when it was originally taken. Unless you change and uncheck the uh, aspect ratio, then if you uncheck it, you'll only make it wider or make it taller. But leaving the aspect ratio intact, you do, you do both at the same time. Let me see here. Okay, so there we are. In this case, in this sign, it was two and a half. So the sign itself is two and a half. And I go up there and I figure out what that is, two and a half inches. 
I make sure that I'm about two to three inches down from the edge of the page. And I mark that size on the, the paper or on my page or my, on, on the computer. And then I enlarge my size by, I want to, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out after it prints. So I send this through the printer and I can send it through at full print. I can send it through at uh, black and white. I can send it through at draft mode, like I mentioned. It doesn't matter as long as you print it the first time. But before you print it, go to your printer and put a pencil mark on either the your your page is sort of sticking out of the printer put a pencil mark on one of the corners the left side the right side wherever and then print it make note of where that little pencil mark was because you have to feed the paper back through again and you want it to print in exactly the same spot so we now go up into your, you click on the printer uh, icon. It's like set it to print and you go into the general tab and you set it here to draft mode, which is at the top. So it's draft normal and best. And best usually gives you the brightest colors, the most vivid and all like, you don't want that. You want draft mode. You want, 50% of the color or less. So you make your print, you go back to the, or sorry me, you go to the advanced and you can change it from color to black and white. I do it to black and white because I don't want to waste my color. The color printing, if you're going to do it a lot, um, if you waste your color on stuff that's going to get thrown away, then you're going to spend more money. I'm a little bit stingy sometimes. So I change it to black and white and I print it. So when it comes out of the printer, I now draw a larger square around that. And I cut it out. Take your straight edge and cut that line, the dotted line. Now what you do is you go and get a piece of tracing paper. So if let's say this, I think was two and a quarter. So we made this, let's say it's three and a quarter. So you got a half inch on either side, top and bottom. So now you go and get a piece of tracing paper or tissue paper, and you cut it the exact same size as the opening. And you can use the piece you cut out as a template for cutting if you want. Keep that piece you cut out. Don't throw it away. You're not done with it yet. So there we are. It's the tracing paper has been put in and I tape it only on the top. So now I look at my page. I know where the mark was that I put at the bottom and I put it back into the printer. Now, imagine there's no picture here yet, but I put it back in the printer and I send it through. Now I do it with color and draft mode. Okay. So now I have the, the, the it's printed on the page, on the tissue paper. I can take the piece that I cut out that had the picture on it. And this is how I got that triangle to do the white background. If you wanted to do the whole thing, you just cut out the whole poster and leave that whole opening and just place, the, place it over the top and lightly sprays through. You don't want a heavy white because you want this to be a faded sign. And this, uh, the amount of white you put on is going to come with a little bit of practice. You'll, you'll, once you start doing it, you'll know how much shows through certain paper. So it takes a little bit of practice. Once you get it down, there's no stopping you. So I use this now as a template to put that on the wall. So there's the, the tracing 
paper book that I use. Here's the white glue that I use. I use weld bond. Not everybody can get weld bond. And I use a uh, dull coat. If you don't have an airbrush, I'm not sure how, how to explain it to you. I guess maybe what you could do is take a white uh, pencil crayon and shade the area with the white crayon in the back and just lightly or even chalk I think would work but if you have an airbrush I mix 50 50 dull coat and thinner and and I spray the covering of the the inkjet print because once you wet it it'll smear if you're not careful so by putting dull coat on it it seals the surface the ink's not going to go anywhere you're good to go um lepage's glue um what are the other ones you could even use canopy glue if if you had it they they're all a pva type glue and that's what works and and what happens is these white glues they will dry clear so you're not going to see the glue So instead of having a paper sign that you peeled off the back or even just a paper sign that you glued on, now you have a sign that sits flush on the wall. There's no edge that you see. And if you were to take a scale ruler, if you could, and measure the thickness of that paper, you probably find that it would be about an inch to two inches thick. Well, there's no signs like that in real life. So I want it to look as, as close to real as possible so by using the white glue or the uh, matte media you spread it out on on the wall put your sign down on top of it and you start from the center and you push it out towards the edges and you just keep pushing until, and you can actually push the paper because it's so thin you can push it into the grooves of the brick and when, when you've got that all done and it's dry, and I usually let it uh, dry for at least three or four hours before I do anything else to it. But when you come back at it, there's the other one of the other signs. Once that was done, I took a piece of, I think it was 600 or 800 grit emery paper and just went over the, the top, the highlights. Now that line that goes across through the through the middle of that windmill, that's actually a high line that's in the brick, in the plastic, the way it was cast uh, or injected, whatever you want to call it. But what ends up happening in this case is you end up taking off the high points, which are the top of the bricks, and you leave, like you can see on the right-hand side over the ale where the blue is, you can see the bricks are a whitish color. And there's the Pepsi sign. And that was done the same way. Once it's glued down, come back after it's dry with a piece of emery paper and, and you clean it off. Now, I cut a circle that was basically only where the colors were on the sign, not where the, uh, the serrated edge of the cap is, but where the, the red, the white, and the blue and I made a template that size so that I could spray the white in the background. So this one was done with tissue paper, or pardon me, tracing paper. And these two were done with tissue paper. So depending on how much, and you can't see the, the triangle here only because of the graphics, but depending on how much white you put in behind it makes it stand out more makes it look like a newer sign and you can see there's there's a blank of the pepsi before i put it on it looks white only because the paper itself is not transparent it's translucent tissue paper is less translucent but it still is and 
that's my signs. So I have some other photographs and I, what I've done is I've done a lot of searching of the internet. Um, wrong one. For signs, I have a whole catalog of signs. Come on. There we go. So I have a whole catalog of signs. I have seven up beer signs, bell signs, like bell telephone, uh, bootleg Mabel's, carpets, Coke, uh, movie, movie posters are a big thing, uh, pinups, pop machines. So once you get one of these signs, you can manipulate it in Microsoft Word. Make it as big or as small as you want. Like there's a there's a good one there. If you have a neighborhood pub, you want to put on the side of the wall. Coffee signs, cigar signs. Oh, who remembers Red Rider, uh, BB guns, and Tetley T. These are some of the uh, uh, orchestra or music music signs. Restaurants, there's the Dutchman's Ale. So you can see how vibrant that is compared to the way it ended up on the wall. There's a whole slew of them. And and I've I've collected these signs probably over the last five years. There's there's sites that have tons of them. And and there are companies that actually sell you signs on um that look like this a whole bunch of signs in one you know so you you have the world is your oyster here you can go out and get whatever you want if there's specific specific signs that you're thinking of just google it and i'm sure something will come up for you because it did for me the other thing i have um I'm into uh, some military modeling as well. And I did this sign for uh, military modelers. Come on now. Be nice. There we go. So this is 135th scale. I just did a, a, a demo display for it. This particular sign on the left is made out of wood. The one on the right is made out of styrene plastic. And again, it's draft mode on the, the sign itself. You glue it on to the wood or plastic. And in this case, I took into consideration the sign was made out of four by eight sheets. So it had seams in it or whatever material they use there was seams in it and it to me it looks better with those lines in it because that would have broken through and there's the back of them so this is the wooden one and this is the plastic one wow we blew through this i have other signs that you can Take a look at if you're interested. If there's any questions, we can start them now and I'll just keep leafing through the photographs or the pictures. Signs. I like the beer signs. And you can also get um, vegetable packing signs. They were a big thing as well. I got World War II posters. Ralph, before we go through the before we go to questions, mm. why yep. don't you explain how you would do your weathering over this over the sign using the side of that structure that you just had there? The side of the structure? Yeah. Okay. Go, go to the you know, the picture there behind, like yeah, yeah, that's one of the small ones. But like, explain to people how you do the weathering and stuff on the side of your structures and things over the signs, and then we'll hit the oh. questions. There's really not too much weathering on the sign other than uh, hitting it with the sandpaper. I mean, if you want to use some powders, 
to if if there's uh, something above this, let's say, um, uh, some metal framing, or or you have uh, an eaves trough that is leaking, or something coming down from a window above, and you have the streaking lines, you can streak it right down over the sign itself. In this case, there wasn't anything like that, but like the, here, I I could have done this. I I would have used some powders to come down a little bit and and streak down over the sign the the brickwork there's a couple of different ways of doing it i did this with oil paints creating a, a a wash a thin wash of white actually i think it was gray um and you just with a loaded brush you put it down the side and let the capillary action take it along the brick once that's done then and it's sealed off then i put the signs on it and you can go at it with oh you can use the mig and ak products if you want although i i'm not sure i would want to the powders i think are the best way to go on a wall like this um you'd have streaking down from the from the the eave at the top here the parapet wall a little bit of dirt from the window sills that comes off the edges of it comes straight down Other than that, and then on the the um, the other sign, where is it? This one. This one I used some of. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I just washed watered down some acrylic paint. And once I I coated this with dull coat when I was finished because I didn't want the paint to soak in. Uh, coat it with dull coat and just with some acrylic paint thinned right down to almost water then you uh, streak it down and it leaves just a hint of dirt and grime coming down you can see it in here blow this up you can see the the grime that's coming down from here there's a little bit more coming down from this edge same over here it's it's dirtier here than it is in this area the same coming down here it's it's all up to your imagination. If you don't like weathering, then then once you got the sign up and and you have it coated and you're happy with that, I understand people don't like doing weathering, but I also uh, think that if you want a complete railroad, you weather everything. You seem to do when I when I got started in in weathering, um, it used to really bother me that I'd look at the magazine and you'd see the buildings were beautifully done and they had this old patina on them of some sort of weathering didn't matter whether it was a lot or just a little and then there was this toy-like train going through the picture and this was on the front cover of a lot of the magazines that I I grew up with I'm not going to mention names but that's that's what uh started me into the weathering and i've been doing it now oh 10 12 years so nothing looks the same to me anymore i even have my wife trained we we uh, go for a, a drive or whatever and we if we happen to go th under a bridge and there's a train crossing she's pointing out the rusty cars to me i'm driving but she's pointing them out used to be she pointed out the good-looking girls now it's rusty rail cars shows you how far we've gone anyway so th that's my take on this I, I when it comes to the signs and walls and stuff like that unless it's in a really really dirty area just a little a little bit is enough what's the old saying less is more if you put too much on you're going to hide the detail that's in the sign and the same in the wall although some weathering can enhance the wall so that's that's my take on this so what do you think bud all right um we we do have a couple questions one of which is is it 
they lost when they were they lost connection halfway through and they were talking about you said tissue paper and or tracing paper can be used yeah which one do you prefer to get tracing, tracing paper tracing paper now if you don't have an airbrush then tissue paper would probably be the better way to go because more white of the paper shows than the tracing paper all right um the other ones we got is so you say using powders on this mm -hmm. would pan pastels be an acceptable powder to use or would you say pan pastels is only for the wood kits no pan pastels are fine all right and and uh, most people that know me uh i don't normally promote pan pastels but we're talking structures now. We're not talking something that's going to be handled repeatedly. Uh, and a lot of times people will not seal the work that they do with pan pastels because they know it's going to disappear when they seal it or it's going to be reduced. But that's not going to happen on a building unless you're constantly handling it. Like a modular layout, you may take the buildings off so you can transport it. If that's the case, then uh, I would go to paint pigments. And you're going to get uh, a heavier concentration of color with paint pigments. All right. Um, now, this is a personal question, but when you're, would you, when you did that brick building with the, where it looked like the um, advertisement was painted onto the brick? Yeah. Would you say, and I don't know how to word it, but um, would you say to go, basically, how did you do get that nice, even look where it really sticks in? Because I've tried that with the regular, one of those signed decals sheets like you showed, and it really didn't get the good look like that, like you had. That's because sometimes the decals are uh, thicker than the tracing paper. And you really have to push to get it to go into the brick. All so right. That's why I say you start in the middle, push with your thumbs. Don't don't just go gently. You push really heavy and you want to squeeze that glue out to the edges. And you're going to need a damp cloth to clean it off when off when it comes out from the edges because you don't want it to build up. All right, I am perusing the Facebook feed. Um, um, so what are some of the other advantages you can use with the tissue paper? Um, I know you said the it's the thin thinness, but what about? Um, it's a little stronger than than the tissue paper as well. All right. So another question I have is, and I don't know if you've done it yet, but creating like where a po like a one a poster on a building's been ripped away. Mm -hmm. Would you say apply the tissue paper onto the building and then rip it away naturally, or how would you go about that? What do you mean, like a building that's coming coming down, a demolition? Like that, or like some of the posters you've had looked like they were actually ad advertisements where they were paint, the tissue would have been applied to the building. Mm -hmm. um, well, like a metal, a of, like a, a paper lot of sign. The signs, a lot of the signs are paper. Um, and, and, if you really wanted to, you could use the, I guess, the tissue paper and try and curl some of the edges or, you know. Okay. If you want it to look like it's peeling off. But the, the signs that I, I'm making reference to basically are painted signs that are painted right on the brick. All right. There's, 
Do you Very have awful. any questions? There's all kinds of signs that are available. Um, let me see here. We'll just go through some signs if you want. We can do that. All right. If that's okay. Um, one of the people were asking is if the Facebook feed is that document you were showing, the folder of yours, was that an actual document that people could download or if it was just stuff you found and created? Which folder are we talking about? The one that the had all your all, wall signs? Like these signs here that I'm showing you now? Yeah. Um, I downloaded these from the internet. Okay. I mean, you can, there's a whole slew of them. This is all telephone, telegraph. Uh, you know, you have some five cents for a public telephone. When was the last time you saw a payphone for five cents? Never. Yeah. Well, see, that's uh, carpets. That's another thing. It, this, you can do this as well um, because carpets and so on. Uh, if you do interiors in your building, you want a carpet. I, I got, I don't even remember where I got these, but you could pick a, a carpet that you want to put in, let's say, the living room of of the family home that you have on the, on the layout. You could do the same thing. You use Microsoft Word, make it the size you want, do it in tissue paper, or do it in in the regular printer paper if you want some depth to it and just print it out and lay it on the floor glue it on the floor there's a okay. whole bunch of whole bunch of different carpets and wooden floors as well okay so i got clarification on the document people were talking about is that they were talking about the document that has the download and the um, instructions that you had at the beginning of your presentation is that available for download uh i personally prefer not to share them because i don't know who's going to use them to do to do clinics on their own with them um i'm i've done it before and i've had one guy turn around and start to do clinics and calling it his own so i i like to share i'll do the clinics i'll give you all the information i've got but i prefer to uh keep the information to myself i mean i went through the process if you want if you remember the process now you'll be able to watch this video you'll be able to make up your own from that once that uh, video comes out there's the pepsi sign that i used So I trimmed off all the wording. I, I cut it off at the hand. You can do it with any of these. Okay. And you could even make them as as uh, signs for uh, billboards for the top of the um, top of a building. Now there's one there. If you trim all of this off, all the black you could put that on a wall and make it look like it was painted on all right um somebody says somebody uses photoshop would would there be any advantage or disadvantages to using that instead of word um yeah it's to me it's a disadvantage because you don't know exactly the size that you're printing unless you unless you know how to manipulate that and get it the same every time i know that in when i do it in 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 word i can get it exactly the size i want i know exactly how it's going to come out and i can feed it back through and do it again i don't have to change things and i and it's it's all from an image like this a small image I don't have to resize or size it to one thing and then save it 
in three or four or five different sizes that I want to use in different places. I can take the one image and resize it for the use that I want right now. And if I need it somewhere else, I can print it again and make it the size that I need there. So all right. That's why I save them all in small images like this. You know, there's, um, there's a, a standard that. Uh, in movie signs, I've I've actually seen this on a, on the, a building wall. I can believe, Ralph, that you saw that when it first came out. But no, um, no, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> We have, Thanks, a question in, we have a question in the chat um, that says, have you ever, um, well, there's two questions here. One's around modern science, maybe you can cover that. And the other one is around, um, have you ever done anything where you've uh, done one sign over an, over an older sign to show that the older sign coming through? Yeah. Uh, I haven't done that, but that, that was, that's on my to-do list. Um it's a, it's a matter of getting the right signs so that they they look right um you would have to, the the lower sign has to be a sign that's more than 50 60 years old and the newer sign probably 20 30 years old younger than that so it's a matter of getting the timing if you if you can find the the signs that match that then that's what I'm looking at. I'm still looking for the the right signs to do that. I have the building to do it on. Um, right now it's called my Forty Creek uh, whiskey plant, but I can put a sign on the side of it, and it can have all kinds of things. And I, on on top of that, I can have my big bottle of whiskey. I just have to find the picture of it. And. The modern sign question was: Was are modern signs done differently than they you than they were done in the past? I most modern signs now are not painted on walls. They're done with, uh, if they are on walls, they're done with a transfer material. Um, most of them now that I've seen are don't go on walls anymore. They go on billboards. I mean, some of the billboards now are huge. And you have digital billboards too now. So all of these things could be put onto a, a, a digital billboard if you really wanted to. I mean, you go from these two here. This is one of the early ones of Sherwin-Williams paint. And you go to that one. That's not so early anymore. That's probably about 25 years difference. So one of the signs that we, one of the, somebody asked, one of their biggest problems with doing all of this is getting the sign into Word itself. It's, it's easy. Okay. So I'm, let me get word back up again. Do, 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 do. I went and closed it. Silly me. When you're in Word, all you have to do is go to uh, the icon of the picture or the tab. Let me, let me share it. Okay, so you go up here into the tab, it says insert picture. It'll take you to your, wherever your pictures are. And you, you pick one. Come on. Oh, yeah. This is going to be my next thing is uh, graffiti on um rail cars so insert a picture there it is so i can put this on the side of a wall i can 
I should be able to move this. So the square ones actually change the aspect ratio. The corner ones make it bigger, smaller. And to move it over, so you just hit space, space. Just keep hitting the space. It goes to the center of the page. It doesn't have to be the center of the page. I, I put it there. When I put um, page layout, reference mailings. Now, where'd it go? Just go to, go to home. Go to home. And you're looking for your paragraph settings to actually just move things I'm around. Looking page layout reference i'm looking for the rulers again references oh view view yeah there we go ruler. put the rulers in so the ruler is on the left side it's down there the ruler's on the top and you can basically see just by by taking this slide it up you can take the widest part and measure it And I'm not sure that looks like it's in centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's in centimeters. But that's basically what you do. When you click on the picture, anywhere in the picture, you bring up that circle again. I can, by taking this piece up here, I can turn it. Or I can straighten it out so he's not looking like he's crooked anymore. It's just how you, you use Microsoft Word. And all I did to move it over is I came over to the left-hand side, and I clicked there, and you can see my flashing cursor down the bottom, and just hit the space bar, and it moves it over. It's like I'm typing. You can yeah, leave Ralph, it at... So, Ralph, I'll, I'll save you. Um from doing a demo of Microsoft Word. Um, so I think it's worth saying that there's uh, there's loads of videos on YouTube uh, by Microsoft and others on how to do all this kind of stuff in Word or any other Microsoft Office or even Open Office. Um, depending what you've got on your computer, um, if you YouTube it, you'll find a video about inserting photographs and uh, moving them around. But there's pretty much the basics from Ralph there. Yeah. Of what yeah. You need. The only reason I put it in Word is because I find it so much easier to size my picture. I don't have to worry about how big it is. I just move it up and down. So there, it's five centimeters across. So from four to nine, that's five centimeters. So that's what I do. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Well, I think that's all the all the questions uh, done there for Ralph. Let me pop my camera back on. It's very bad of me. Uh, hopefully, it's going to restart. There we go. Um, okay. So, um, <clears throat> oh, I just have to point this out while I'm on camera, Ralph. This is the. Uh, I got this out. I did this for for Kevin. Look at that. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ring. It's the Cato ring of shame for you, Kevin, because you promised me, you promised me N scale, and we didn't, we didn't deliver. So next time, N scale, or oh, I'll be shipping you the code of the the Cato ring of shame, <clears throat> and you can wear it while you're doing your clinic. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> well, we've got that out of the way. Um, there's been lots of great suggestions today of clinics that people would like to. Uh, to see and I know Ralph will come back and do us another clinic so potentially guys put put in the comments or, or message us uh, we might start a thread I suppose in the NMRA Facebook group on clinics that people would like to see um, however we can't imagine here these clinics so if there's uh, if there's a clinic on a topic that we haven't done yet if it's a weathering sort of thing um, we've got loads of people for that if it's something to do with paint we have people for that if it's building structures as you can see we definitely have people for that track everything like that lcc i think we have a couple of people for that um but the, but what i'm trying to get at here is if you yourself want to give a clinic it's really easy to do um 
really simple. We're very supportive. There's a whole team that will help get you set up. Um, make sure you've got the audio and the visual and all the bits and pieces that you need. Um, if you want to come and do an NMRA X clinic and share what you do with everybody else um, or share your layout or any aspect of the hobby with other people, then uh, get in touch with us and, and we'd, love to, we'd love to add you to our growing uh, pool of clinicians. There's over 70 people now um, agreed to provide clinics to NMRAX events and to regions and divisions around the world. So, um, And Ralph is just one of them. And my, my volume is apparently really low. So all I can do is shout. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry if my audio is pretty low, but uh, I'm unfortunately uh, suffering from a really bad cough um, and uh, my voice is starting to go. So I uh, will um, <clears throat> let Ralph go. We'll uh, kick you all back into the uh, waiting for the next person and we'll get, um, I think it's the last clinic of today. I've, I've lost track of the time, but I think it's yep. the last clinic of the day and we'll go down to Mexico and... Uh, get eduardo on but thank you ralph thank you for doing us another clinic we'll see you again in the future absolutely take care of yourself stay safe guys and thanks for having me on gordy <laughs>